Hey, look, his lips, they're not moving, but I can hear his voice. I think he's trying to explain something. What? It was time to upgrade your MacBook? And you're not a big fan of these unboxing videos? But for some reason, uh, you created one anyway. Huh, strange. Thick. Got power. Oh, there it shows up. Well, I'm up to 12 minutes so far since I opened the package. That's not bad, really. If you can get it all set up in 15 minutes, I imagine it's going to take a long time to copy the data from one to the other. But I'm about to find out. Yeah, I'm starting the timer slightly ahead of the... Um, the rendering, but that's the best I can do with my two hands. Timer's going. And start. Yeah, once it's going, you just have the timers basically it's not very scientific but it shows you the difference between the two and I'll hit stop when one machine stops versus the other and uh, you know up in the corner in iMovie it's got a little circle that shows you its progress in rendering it's a fairly lengthy video I think it's it's about 10 minutes 
in 4K. While it's doing that, I'll just make a comment that on the right with my MacBook 14, I can hear the fan spinning up. It's probably using all of its cores. Meanwhile, on the left, the 2022 MacBook M1 Max fan is not on. Okay. The 2022 MacBook M1 Max finished the rendering in three minutes and 47 seconds. Meanwhile, my 2014 MacBook Pro is only about a quarter of the way through. Okay, there you have it. it. Took 11 and a half minutes on my old computer uh, versus under four minutes on the new one. It's not a scientific test, but it's a good practical test of uh, the power of a new M1 Max computer. Okay, for this next real life test, I've opened Logic Pro 10 and it is optimized for the M1 chip. So we should see a big difference on the 2022 M1 MacBook. But let's give it a try. You can see I've got them both set up to bounce the entire project and create an MP3 file. The start and end positions are the same on both machines. And um, the next step, when you click on OK, it's gonna ask you for a file name. I'm just gonna call that test. And same over here on the right. I'm going to call that test as well. And the minute I hit save, uh, click on bounce, I mean, it's going to start rendering that, um, that song. But before it does, I'm just going to start these timers at the same time. So that we have some sort of relative timer going to measure how fast these things perform. Could be close in this case. Very difficult to hit start at the same time. Okay. Up here and up here. We're gonna click on bounce at the same time. Okay, the M1 is finished. You can hear the fans going on my 2014 again. They really wind up in terms of speed because it uh, taps out the CPUs. Every core would be pegged at over 90% based on my experience. Okay, there you have it. MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip is one minute and 17 seconds. And the 2014 MacBook Pro is two minutes and 14 seconds now. There are more details around why one performs faster than the other. Some of it has to do with how much RAM each computer has. The M1 MacBook Pro Max has 32 gigs of RAM and the other one only has 16 gigs of RAM. And the SSD drives on both might perform differently. I think that's the next thing I should do is maybe just a quick test of the read-write speed of the hard drive. Okay, in this test, I've just got the Blackmagic Design disk speed test. It's the same version of the same program. In both cases, I've selected the internal SS3 as the target drive. And actually, these don't have to be started at the same time. So there's a huge difference here. It almost doesn't look correct to me. The 
results I'm getting from my 2014 MacBook Pro are pretty predictable and in the realm of what I expect. It's writing at around 700 megabits per second and the reads are anywhere from 900 to 1000 megabits per second. But the stats of the um, M1 Max are just incredible. I'm not sure if this uh, version of the speed test is accurate because it would seem to me that those numbers are off the charts. The write speeds are 6,200 megabits per second, and the read speeds are up there around uh, 5,200 megabits per second. So six times faster. That's really incredible. That might have a bigger impact when you're rendering video or bouncing a music file from Logic Pro than the CPU. I'm really excited about this new MacBook. You know, the M1 Max chip, the extra RAM, the four terabyte hard drive, it's gonna make a huge difference for my work in music and video production. And I, I'm really excited about it. But at the same time, I'm a little sentimental about my 2014 MacBook Pro. I had it for eight years. It was a great return on investment. I mean, I got nothing to complain about for the money I spent and the return I got. There I am thinking, you can hear my voice, but my lips aren't moving again. Bizarre. If you're new to this channel and you like this video, click on the like button and consider subscribing. When you subscribe or click on the notification bell, it helps my channel grow. And thank you for watching.